Jennifer Fontana and my role here is elementary principal. I think that relationship between teachers and students um, is um, imperative. I think that students learn from people that they know care about them and that they care about and are motivated to learn from. Most people can point to critical moments or pivotal, pivotal individuals uh, that made a difference. I think it's important to establish relationship and trust first um, and then well, that allows me you know to be able to step in and push in some places where you know it's like come on we, we can do this. I can point to certain classroom teachers or I can especially point to a music teacher or to uh, who took a personalized or individual uh, uh, approach to sort of engaging me. And we know that when students have a caring adult or two or three or ideally everybody, it makes for a more meaningful educational experience. My approach to teaching is just trying to find connection to students. That's really it. It's, it's, it's connecting to students. Because if the student doesn't feel connected to you, doesn't feel connected to the classroom, they're not going to be interested, they're not going to want to engage, maybe they're not going to want to show up. So I think the biggest factor that determines if the student is going to be successful in my classroom, my personal classroom, is do I have a connection with that student? Do that, does that student have a connection with the curriculum, with the program? I think most people probably like elective teachers better because they choose to take that class. Core classes are classes that you have to take, they're credits that you have to do. Honestly, I like classes like this where it's like you get to like do what you like, like follow your passion. The core classes don't really do it for me. I think that getting out and like doing stuff like video production and like definitely like elective based classes are like a way to um, have students express their creativity. School doesn't, it's not an environment that fosters creativity. I like the seldom moments in which I learn something I'm actually interested in. Um, there is a lot of variety at this specific school, so there are some things I'm actually interested in. But there's a lot of classes I just don't have any interest in. Um, I personally, I find that I do really well in my electives. Um, I take a bunch of creative classes. I feel like I want to be there and I feel like I want to do stuff in those classes rather than be in other classes where I'm usually just unmotivated. I feel like that students are better learners when it's sort of like taught to them in a different way than just like reading books and on paper. Everybody learns in a different way, so just trying to attack many different learning styles. Uh, some like videos more so, others like reading and writing assignments, others like discussions, so just trying to get a lot of different uh, uh, learning styles is the idea. I use, try to give them some type of visual, um, and I tend to go back and forth so that the kids not just at one place, visual, visual. Um, I focus a lot on that. I think that once the kids start making that connections, uh, it's easier to comprehend what we're talking about. I'm a firm believer in hands-on learning and really looking at ways in which students have an opportunity to touch, feel, experience, whatever that content or curriculum is, but it also has to be something that um, they have a personal interest in as well, and so being able to mirror those two things um, allows for a better educational experience for the student. My name is Turkey Vulture. This is my outdoor school name. My job is the site supervisor. So um, we have six sites at Multnomah ESD and uh, Multnomah Outdoor School and I run one of them. I'm sort of like the principal at one of the sites. A lot of the science that we teach um, happens in small groups, anywhere from like three to eight, it usually happens around five or six or seven students in each group. Um, and so a high school student actually takes that group and goes and does all the lessons for the day. High schoolers are great because they are able to build rapport and connect with students in a way that adults can't. That's probably one of the biggest things is uh, the difference. Um, and then also the aspect of the social emotional learning. That's something that's starting to happen a lot more in uh, traditional schooling, um, but that's a 
big focus of what we do out here as well is um, support young people into those things like accessing emotions, making friends, building trust, things like that. At Outdoor School, I go by Badger, but back at home, I go by Jeff Gehrig. And um, again, I teach out at Deep Creek Damascus K-8. At Outdoor School, I take the teacher role and have had the privilege of being able to be at Outdoor School 20 times now. Overall, I mean, there's the social piece that isn't even, you know, it's not, it's not written in the standards, it's not something you'll find in the curriculum, but just for students to come out here and experience nature as it is and firsthand. For some kids, they have not been away from home, so it's kind of a growing um, thing for kids students um, and then you take that curriculum piece and it just makes it such more enriched because they're doing science hands-on in the outdoors having that hands-on experience is you can't replicate that in the classroom and so having that experience for them maybe for some their only experiences in the outdoors and they can really, I think they can then connect, make the connection. When you do go back to the classroom, you can make those connections so much easier. Again, it's just the hands-on piece is, you cannot uh, match it. I've been involved in teaching for, uh, well, 20, 21 years now. Um, and so I've been seeing some of the different waves of things come through education. I've seen it go away for one year. It was cut from the program and I saw the impact was huge. I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of alternative education. I think part of what we've done wrong as a school system that we're getting better at is recognizing that students learn in a multitude of fashions and that um, the cookie cutter approach doesn't work. It's a little bit of a tall order. Um, if we as educators were being successful, then 100% of our students would be excelling. And we know that's not the reality today, so we still have work to do. And uh, that's, that's a challenge that not just a teacher uh, has to confront alone. Uh, I know that our school leaders and principals think about that question. I know that every day we're driven by that question. Uh, what next thing can we do to, to improve conditions for every student to have their diverse learning needs uh, met in unique ways? It's not, the school is not a community for everybody, and I think it should be. I really um, think that teachers are being um, more and more overwhelmed. I, I'm not gonna, like, I get it. Priority standards matter. Um, teachers should be accountable, right, for student learning and growth and development. But I think that there are like 79 things being thrown at us and that in the midst of that, like um, relationship and time with students is being lost. And right, like that is the connection with teaching. I, I wish that there were smaller class sizes um, so that we could really spend some more time with students. I'm seeing a lot more students report feelings of anxiety and feeling overwhelmed like before they can even get in the door of the building and that really makes me that makes me sad, right? Like that that's that is an example that something something within this institution is not right.